The Dallas Cowboys select Michigan defensive tackle Mozzie Smith at number 26. What does this mean for their defense? All that more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, then this game is definitely for you to download the game. Just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise with using promo code locked on all caps in the game. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, let's just jump right into it. The Dallas Cowboys at pick number 26 select Michigan defensive tackle Mozzie Smith. Before we even talk about the fit, why the Cowboys made the selection. Let's just talk about the player itself. What did you see from Mozzie Smith when you watched this tape? This is a big, strong defensive tackle, nose tackle combo guy. He's he's powerful, powerful, powerful. Uh, we talked about it. He was uh, number one on Bruce Feldman's freak list uh, for you know kind of complete athleticism. Is a weight room freak. Um, he's a guy that, despite only having uh, half a sack. Uh, as a as a, in his career actually was tied for QB hits last year uh, <laughs> for the lead of QB hits for Michigan last year. Uh, this is uh, you know the, I think the surprising thing is is not so much that the Cowboys took this defensive tackle uh, at, at the bottom of the round is that you know that he it's that they took a defensive tackle. This is a guy who kind of fits the bill in my opinion of of a of a kind of a bottom of the round uh, first round defensive tackle. He's going to be an elite run defender. He's going to be someone who will push the pocket and I think will give more pass rush ability than he provided uh, in college, partly because of his role. Uh, but this is an ascending player who's an athlete. This isn't like a sloppy nose tackle. This is a guy who has the athleticism to develop something as a pass rusher uh, and, and, and you know help out on twists and that sort of thing. And not, not necessarily going to have to come off the field on third downs. So one of the things that you and I actually talked about early Thursday morning was that in the last few years, the Cowboys have just gambled on athleticism, right? <laughs> they drafted Tyler Smith last year in round one, who was an athlete. They drafted Sam Williams in the second round, athlete. The year before that was Micah Parsons, who was a heck of an athlete, right? Like they're just gambling on traits. And there's, I mean, you're not going to find very many defensive tackles that have more traits than Mozzie Smith. Like he's just, he's different for a 330 pound nose tackle. He is not. He's got this trash can full of dirt. Like he can actually move sideline to sideline. Yeah, he can penetrate. He can get on the other side of the line of scrimmage and disrupt. Uh, and you see that a lot in the run game. I mean, he a lot of times Michigan just basically lined him up over the center and he just destroyed centers uh, throughout the. the and, and again, I mean, much like we talked about, uh, you know, every dayers will know that we've been talking about how good the, the centers are in that conference. Uh that you know, and he and he had so he had a lot of experience going against a lot of very good centers, and there's a lot of tape out of him destroying guys that are, are very highly thought of uh, draft prospects this year. So um, this is this is the kind of guy that that you know you turn on the tape. There's definitely a lot to see there, uh, and 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 if he can kind of translate some of that you know physicality and disruption, especially in the run game, uh, he is he's going to be an easy fit for a defense that has been missing this type of player from, you know, being a truly elite defense, it feels like. Let's talk about the pass rush potential, because I think if you're not a fan of this pick, I think that's what you're pointing to, right? Like just yeah. doesn't have a lot of sacks, not even a ton of pressures. Um, is, is there some reasoning behind that? Do you think it's because of Michigan scheme or is this guy just not really the pass rushing type of defensive tackle? I think it's partially usage, but I also think that he just is underdeveloped in his hand technique usage. You know, uh, he's he's I think he's just, you know, has un underdeveloped in a lot of the pass rush techniques overall. 
Dane talked about how he uh, needs to learn how to get skinny through the holes, and you see that uh, in his tape, right? You know, he's oh well, it's gonna be hard for a three hundred thirty pound yeah, guy to I get mean, skinny, um, just to be honest. That's true, but I, I think you know the ability to kind of fit through through cracks and 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 if not getting through you know, really, you know, forcing, straining an offensive line to kind of contain you to get in and, and, and forcing a double team, which frees up someone else down the, down the line. You know, I think, you know, the, the, here's what, here's what I'll say. Think about what the, the Cowboys do inside w- with their pass rush, right? There's lots of twists and stunts. This is a guy who could come down, you know, on a, on a puller as a spike and have a guy pull around his, his backside and he'll destroy whoever he's coming down on if they're not suspecting them uh, coming at them. So, in those sort of in, in this defense where there's a lot of movement, where there's lots of you know guys freeing up other guys to kind of get loose in the in the inside and twist and stunts, especially for Micah, uh, this is a guy that is going to be able to really be a valuable piece because he you know even if he doesn't get home, he's going to wreck a team's blocking scheme because he's just very quick and yeah. physical and, and destructive. All right, we're going to talk about the the process of how we got to Mozzie Smith at pick number twenty six in the next segment, but. Just kind of really quickly, I want to talk about his fit with this defense because you look at the current interior defensive line, it's Oso Tigizua, it's Jonathan Hankins, it's Neville Gallimore. Uh, how do you think he fits in with that group? I mean, I think he comes in right away and he's your starter. I mean, I, I think Jonathan Hankins and him will probably, you know, rotate things early, early on. But I, I just imagine him, you know, getting a, a lion's share of, of 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 snaps there. You know, last year they tried to cobble together that that defensive tackle role with some defensive ends as well, especially on passing downs. You know, there's just a lot of these snaps that have been available, uh, even with even with that kind of pass rushing role being filled sometimes. And I, I think he's going to be able to slide in and take those right away, and maybe even kind of take a, a lion's share so you don't you know feel like you necessarily have to rotate him that's the other thing i will say he played a lot of snaps a lot of snaps. so I, I i think he is i think he is likely to uh be able to hold up for a long time and that means because he's in a he's in good shape he's not like a sloppy guy so maybe you you can actually feed him more snaps than you would uh normally in a no now, in this uh, personally i don't think this cuts into oso digizua's snaps at all i mm-hmm. think him and hankins are probably going to be playing that role and maybe yeah. uh, honestly i won't be surprised if hankins starts the year and they try to ease in Miles yeah. and smith and by the end of the year as hankins kind of starts to wear down a little bit that's when you see more of mozzie but my guess is he's, he's gonna just eat into the carlos watkins exactly. tristan hill quentin bahana snaps that we saw last year there's tons of snaps available like yeah. you know like it, 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 you know oso diggies can't can't play every snap and he's he plays a, a different spot than oso so uh yeah he's definitely not going to eat into oso snaps if anything it's hankin snaps it's carlos watkins yeah. snaps it's probably all of carlos watkins snaps and some of J- jonathan hankin snaps if this guy can hold up for long periods of time which you know if he's able to play three downs you know by the end of the season uh, then, then he'll he'll have plenty of snaps. I don't know if you want him to play three downs, though. To be honest, right? I, you, it might be more beneficial just to keep him fresh all season long. And as you get to third and eight, that's when you see more of Chauncey Golston playing inside. You see more of Demarcus Lawrence playing and, inside. And Golston's another guy that that maybe they just move straight straight to defensive tackle. And now you just talk about your defensive tackle rotation being sure. the three techs as Osa and Chauncey, and then your nose tackles as as yes. Uh, the two guys we just mentioned, that, and, and Mozzie just kind of slowly eats into the percentage as right. the season goes on. Yes. All right, let's talk about how the Cowboys got to the selection of Mozzie Smith at number 26 next. This episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. You've heard us talk about this mobile game before, and it's not quite as easy uh, to be a GM as you might think. I know everybody was watching the draft tonight thinking that they should have been making different picks or whatever. Uh, But when you play Ultimate Football GM, you are in charge. You get to control and manage every strategic aspect of your team as you play through seasons trying to lead your team to glory as you're going to try to build a historic dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you are responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and coordinators, uh, managing all the finances, including negotiating players' salaries and terms. You're going to have to navigate your franchise through free agency, the draft, injuries, player personnel, things that pop up, locker room issues, and all the ups and downs of the season. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. 
Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want to and when you want to. A lot of time Cowboys listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. That is Locked On, all in caps, so make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That is ultimate-gm.com, Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. We also want to let you know about the live NFL Draft Hangout show. Round one is over, but Kyle Krabs, Joe Marino, and other Locked On NFL local experts will join the Locked On NFL Scouting YouTube page for rounds two and three, as well as rounds uh, uh, four, five, six, and seven recap shows on Saturday to get you caught up on every single pick. Join the NFL Draft Dudes for the second round on Friday on YouTube starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time. All right, Landon, let's um, kind of reset where the Cowboys were, like going into pick 22-23. We actually got some really good nuggets from the draft show and Kyle Yeomans that the Cowboys got multiple trade offers at picks 22 and 23, one from Kansas City, one from the Raiders to potentially move back. Uh, and then we had the Bills picking at 27, Jumping in front of the Cowboys uh, at pick 25 to select Dalton Kincaid. Do you believe the Cowboys were going to take Dalton Kincaid at number 26 if he were available? I definitely think that he would have been uh, in consideration. I, I At this point, it's tough to say whether or not they – thought Mozzie was was above Kincaid. I think it's it's obviously the buff uh, obviously Buffalo thought so. Um you know, well, it's, it's, I, to, to be fair, I think I, I saw the quote from Brandon B and he said they thought Dallas was taking Dalton Kincaid and that's why they moved yeah. down. So yeah, so there you go. I mean I, I obviously Buffalo thinks that 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 that, that Kincaid would have would have been the choice. Um I I, I think that, that you could have made an argument that you know for especially we talk about Inter draft position scarcity and and how it can drive a uh, uh, value, um, and so I think that that's part of reason why the Cowboys didn't want to take a risk on on getting a defensive tackle later because they just didn't feel like they could get somebody. Um, so maybe they would have maybe especially with the way the tight ends fell and even with Dalton Kincaid uh, off the board, uh, or even if he was on the board, maybe they they would have gone defensive tackle simply because. All the deep, all the tight ends were still on the board, and 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 they could have easily lasted to your another pick in the second round, and and you know we'll have conversations about what mm. they're going to do on day two, but you know is it possible possibility that you go target one of these guys still and, and trade up a little bit to go? So I, I think that they looked at the, that situation, and even when Kincaid came off the board, they probably didn't panic because they were like, well, there's five or six other guys that we like here, and, and there's plenty of tight ends. But maybe we can get one later at this point. Well, it, it doesn't seem like they panic. I was happy to watch the war room cam and yeah. let's do a little bit of Jerry Jones. It was just, did they want to trade down from 26 to listen? We, we know the offers or the, the teams that wanted to come up. Kansas city at 31 yeah. was looking to come up to draft Mozzie Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Raiders who pick at 38, they called the Cowboys initially when Kincaid was still available, I think Kincaid was the guy that they wanted initially. Uh, but even after Kincaid was off the board, the, ca- the Raiders called again. And I've got a really good hunch, wink, 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 that Mozzie Smith was the target as well there. In hindsight, we don't know what those two teams offer. Would you have considered moving back to 31 or 38? Knowing Mozzie Smith would have been off the board one way or the other. I might have. I think um, I might have as well. Uh, uh, but I also can understand. I can understand why they wouldn't like. Like if let, let's put it this way, if their intention was take to take like Mayor, and then they traded back and they didn't trade back and they they turned down offers, I think I would have been more upset because I, again, I I could see the argument that again, and I could, this is maybe what Dan Quinn was yelling at Mike McCarthy about was. We're, there is not another defensive tackle in this class that is going to have the impact that Amazi Smith has. I can find you could probably find two other tight ends who might be able to give you eighty five percent of Michael Mayer their rookie year. So I, I, I could see that argument. I, 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 look in a neutral situation, trading back I think makes a ton of sense. 
I think this is a, a situation where the again the position scarcity maybe makes it a, a fair argument either both ways. Yeah, and that's something that's very obvious. Like if you just look at the consensus board right now, especially after Brian Brzee went off the board of the Saints yeah. at pick thirty, I believe. I and mean, he's a completely different type of defense. Oh yeah, tackle, yes, too. without a doubt. Yeah, it's yeah. just. I mean, here here are your top defensive tackles, right? Do we want to call Atatambi Atabarwe a, a defensive tackle? I mean, not. And if you are, you're certainly not going to be playing him the same way that you're going to be playing Mozzie Smith. Okay. And I think well, that's that's what I mean by scarcity, right? Is that like there's guys out there who can play three technique, but that's not necessarily what you're drafting Mozzie. Just by using the expert consensus board, if you let's say we get rid of Atatambi, right? Because he's yeah. really this five technique or big defensive end. There were that two, guy. yeah, there was two defensive tackles in the top 125 on the consensus board left. Keanu Benton from Wisconsin and Gervin Dexter from Florida. The Cowboys had Gervin Dexter in for a 30 visit, and I just wonder if they didn't like what they saw. I mean, you know, listen, when we <laughs> the peel the curtain back a little bit, when we found out that he was a, a guy that they visited, we all got concerned. I mean, yeah. he had he has issues getting off the off the football. And maybe the thought process was that they didn't necessarily like Benton as look, when we talked about Benton originally, uh, the concerns with Benton was not can he give you some pass rush? It's more is he actually good enough as a run defender to be what He's supposed to yes. be as a nose tackle. That's not an argument with Mozzie Smith. That's yes. that's the feature. What you're trying to get is to get more from Mozzie Smith in, in the kind of more traditional areas where you're, you're looking for more from your nose tackle. Yes. Uh, last thing before we kind of move on to day two. Again, we're going to be covering Mozzie Smith more in-depthly as you know next week as we get more time to really study the film. But with the way that the board played out, with the, all the tight ends still available outside of Dalton Kincaid, with Joey Porter Jr., the Penn State cornerback there, with yeah. Nolan Smith available, who went to the Eagles a couple of picks later. Do you think the Cowboys made the right decision? I, I, I think they did. I think they made a good decision. Let's put it this way. I, I mean, I, I think, like I said, it's it's easy to, to second guess and say that they could have traded back maybe and gotten some more picks. I think that they were pretty convinced on the guy that they wanted and they were convicted and they made the pick. Uh, you know, if there was bad process here, I could get more upset about it. But I mean, to be blunt, I'm thrilled with the pick. I love the pick. I was excited at the moment that I simply because Mozzie Smith was not someone that ever entered my mind is that that they would draft. They haven't drafted a defensive tackle in the first round in, in what is it, 30 years or something like that? I mean, it's it's been, it's been a, a really long, it's been a really long time. So I just think that. I just think that the fact that they did it, which which you know confounds expectations and the type of player that he is, and the fact that the Cowboys defense has been so good while wrote trying to work around this nose tackle sized hole in their defense, I think it, it got me excited because it to me it feels like they're trying to finally fill in the gaps uh, and take this defense to the next level. I will say one of the things that makes a lot of sense, and we talk about draft sequencing a lot is that when you take your defensive tackle in round one, in this case, Mozzie Smith, yeah. rounds two and three play out very nicely. Now, again, things can go haywire for the Cowboys, uh, but I think you're going to like the players that are on the board yeah. or at least close to being on the board when you pick here at 58 and 90. And let's discuss some potential options next. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and the calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. It's Built Bar. You've got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices after consuming a bunch of you know junk food during draft night, like five pieces of pizza, uh, I've got the most amazing thing for you. It's Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, you're not even going to know that they're healthy for you. They're that good. What's makes Built Bar so good? Well, they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real dark chocolate. Plus, they come in so many uh, so many unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. Not sure how Built does it, but only 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, with a whopping 17 grams of protein. But now you can go to your local Walmart 
and buy a four box of the, uh, I think the, the double chocolate bar that got the coconut puff, the cookies and cream, or if you, yeah, <laughs> you live uh, near Sam's Club. Run and grab a 13 bar box of some of the hit flavors, including brownie batter puff and churro puff. Uh, and of course, you can go to built.com to see the entire selection of their amazing built bars and built puffs. All right, Landon, let's uh, let's talk about day two. So the Cowboys got their defensive tackle out of the way, which was arguably the biggest need on the roster. And I got to say, we're, I know we're a long ways away from the Cowboys pick, but things look very nice for the Cowboys going into day two. Yeah, I mean, just to point back to what you just said before the break, I, I think the sequencing we t- have talked about and complained about 58 for a long time, that, that the way that the, the board has fallen for us when we do these mock simulators, it, it just always kind of ended up ugly. But when it was good is when you took Will McDonald or Mozzie Smith or someone at, at 26, and then the sequencing seemed to work out. I think that this is even better than you could have anticipated. Like oh, I said, gosh, the, yeah. the fact that Mayer has lasted to the second round is ridiculous. Well, let's, uh, let's and, go by and all, position by position. Yeah, just yeah, really let's quickly. Do it. So please. All the tight ends. Michael Mayer, Darnell Washington, Luke Musgrave, Sam Laporta, Tucker Kraft, all available. Now I don't know if the Cowboys would draft Tucker Kraft at 58, but he was one of the guys they had in yeah. for a 30 visit. So let's say there's five tight ends. The odds of one of them being available to you at 58 are pretty good. Now, if you want to go offensive line, right? Both guards, Osiris Torrance and Steve Avila still sitting there. And I think, I mean, we talked about the perfect mock draft a couple of days ago. If Steve Avila is there at 58, how is that not a home run pick? I mean, what happens if Osiris Torrance and Steve Avila are still there at 58? I mean, it's crazy. Like, honestly, like I don't know that we could have asked for the board to fall better this way you know like yeah. this, for the for that that many offensive players to kind of fall into a range uh where they're incredible value so yeah. um you know I've, and, and look and that's not even to count for all the other guys that we thought would potentially be off the board you know for for the cowboys too like tipman and, and some of these other well, interior offensive linemen that that sure. usually go before 58 they'll get pushed down as well so there could be a lot of good stuff. For yeah, and we should also mention Cody Mock is still available. Matthew Bergeron, who I know people like quite a bit. Yep. On top of that, if you want to go cornerback, which we know the Cowboys at least had some level of interest, Joey Porter on the board, I've got a feeling he's going to be gobbled up. Yeah. Probably at pick 32, but still DJ Turner, Keely Ringo, Tyreek Stevenson, Cam Smith, Julius Brents, Darius Rush. Odds are pretty good that you're going to see multiple guys at that spot available. And one more name. And I don't know if the Cowboys would do this at 58. Actually, I do know this. Drew Sanders is still sitting there. And you and That's I both true. That's you true. and I both thought 26 is maybe a little bit rich for Drew Sanders, but if he starts getting there in the 50s, I can see it. I you know, listen, I mean, the Cowboys want to get real crazy. They should figure out a way to trade up a little bit, maybe, uh, and 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 in the second round, or trade like uh, another pick and and maybe swap a, a next year's pick or something like that and and trade up from the third round uh, yeah. and see some of these guys because well, if they go if they go defense back to back it feels like the need to kind of add something to your offense something to your offense it becomes dire because at that point you you want like a start I, I want an offensive lineman I would love at least a pass catcher of some sort I, I think and, and, and waiting, and then you also still have to get a running back. So I, I agree. Drew Sanders, I think, is is a guy that value-wise fa- would be fantastic, but it's like... Well, that's why I'm interested just sitting there, right? Because yeah, if you're just patient, I think I think there's a chance Luke Musgrave gets to you, or maybe Sam Laporta. And if it's not a tight end, maybe it's Drew Sanders. And if it's not a linebacker, maybe it's Cody Mock. Or maybe it's, you know, Tyreek Stevenson, who you and I both like a lot, right? Like... Yeah, I think patience here is going to put, be critical for the Cowboys. The, the board has the board is falling very well for the Cowboys. Well, I'm, I'm I didn't see the last pick of the first round, but we'll leave. Fe- Levis is still on the board, right? Yeah, it was Felix from Kansas State was the last pick. That's Kansas right. State. That's right. Actually, I did see that. Yeah. So Will Levis is still on the board. We just talked about all the all the guys that the Cowboys are interested in, and that's not even to mention all of the people that the Cowboys aren't interested in yep. necessarily. That also fell. So. Uh, I think the board is falling very favorably for the Cowboys. 
uh, they should just let it roll. I, I, I mean, you know, if they if there's someone they wanted to specifically target, if they felt antsy about the tight end, I could see them making a small move up. But honestly, I don't know that they necessarily need to. They should probably just let it roll, let it roll, and see it play out. Yeah, because there's I just think a lot of guys available. Yeah, and I think you'll see Levis and Hendon Hooker come off the board relatively quickly. And then again, there's a lot of guys that like Dallas. I just don't know if I was interested in like. Brian Branch, right? Or Keon yeah. White, or maybe Jalen Hyatt, who they did have in on a visit. But I don't know, man. It, you would need to have like 10 or 12 of these guys go off the board almost all in a row before I'm thinking about making a move because there's just so much talent available on the board right now. Absolutely. I mean, look, I mean, like, I, 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 I think. I was saying that it would be an issue to like try to work around having Drew Sanders, but I would take Drew Sanders at 58. If that was the pick, you know, I would be, and I'd be happy about it. Uh, and we'd, we'd make it work obviously uh, with the rest of the picks clearly because all these other guys got pushed down to yeah. 58. So likely there's going to be someone great at 90. That'll make you feel better about the offense. And, and then you get a running back somewhere. Is there any player here worth trading up for? Let's say the Cowboys again, picking at 58, somebody worth going up to 36, you know, the old DeMarcus Lawrence, Sean Lee trade where you package your second and third to go get this guy. I mean, maybe Joey Porter, like if, if like you have that kind of grade on him. Um, but I, I mean, listen, the other kind of targets Avila uh, or, or Osiris or, 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 or one of the tight ends, like I, those are just not positions that I necessarily would want to trade up to go get, you know what I'm saying? Cornerback. I, I think that's a position, you know, of value. One of the money five positions, it, pro- it might be worth it. I think it'd be difficult for one of the other spots, especially with the way the ball board's falling. Let, let it just kind of come to you really quickly before we go. I just, yeah. Something that s- stood out to me today is, uh, I heard somebody say that Dan Quinn really wants a nickel corner, and that's why he liked Emmanuel Forbes. First of all, I I don't see Emmanuel Forbes as a nickel corner. So that's I, interesting, I, yeah. So I don't know if Jory Porter fits in there because I don't think he's a slot. But no, is there a corner in the second round that you think could be a nickel guy? And why are are the Cowboys just more you know interested in keeping Deron Blaine on the outside? That could be it. Maybe they, they value him as an outside receiver and they feel like finding a nickel corner is, a you know, listen, nickel is still a position that isn't quite valued at the same rate as a boundary corner, you know, like a top end one. You can get a very good nickel corner who can impact the, the, the position in in day two, you know, because because the position has a lot of players in it that are that are good football players. Uh, but there isn't nearly as the as much of the demand uh, clearly yeah. as as there is in the NFL. What a first round! That was a that was a lot of fun. It was crazy. Uh, it was yeah. it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Every day, as Lane and I will be back on Monday to discuss the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round of the rest of the draft. Hopefully, the draft plays out well for the Cowboys. We both think it thinks uh, think it will. Cannot wait to get into it. Uh, go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.